this video how 129 stage 5 CKD patients are avoiding dialysis with the most modern approach to the treatment for CKD. Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine. Let's say you have CKD and your goal is getting better. What will happen to your kidneys if you decided to replace all the protein you eat with carbs? Will this cause a huge spike in your insulin that would send you to an early dialysis? Or will this help you somehow? Let's find out. Because today, I will answer the biggest question humanity has ever tried to answer. The answer to the ultimate question of life the universe and everything is no not that one even more important are carbs bad for your kidneys and by the way i didn't just make this video to use a quote from my favorite non-fiction book no, I made this video to share with you a new study which is literally changing everything we know about the renal diet. It's true and these findings will give so many patients a chance to improve. So let's talk about this right now because I want you to hear this from me now and not from your doctor in 30 years. I mean, this is all about avoiding dialysis today and you won't really need this info anymore when your doctor finally catches up in three decades. We will all be driving cyber trucks on Mars by then. So let's talk about this now and let's focus on what really matters about the renal diet, which is protein, of course. So the question is, should you cut protein or should you eat more of it? To answer this most important question, let's say we have two patients. Patient A, let's call him Charlie. He has diabetes, he is in stage 4 of CKD and he is following a diet that also includes small amounts of meat fish and dairy, all the healthy stuff, don't get me wrong, ribeye steak, grass pasture butter, and wild cup salmon. Patient B, let's call him Vom. He also has diabetes, he is in stage 4 of CKD, and he is following a plant-based diet that completely forbids anything animal-based. Despite being diabetic, Vom is getting more of his calories from carbs, and the only thing that's wild caught in his diet is... I don't know, kale probably. Anyway, what he eats every day is fruit, oats, whole grains, and even some apartheid food staples. Apartheid food staples are refined grains that have been processed to be completely out of any protein content at all. And they look and taste just like pasta. Yeah, vegan bomb who has diabetes has been told to eat about 100 grams of pasta every day in order to protect his kidneys. Okay, okay, in these videos, the patients were being interpreted by grizzly bears, but you have to imagine them as real people, all right? Because this is what they use in the study. 129 real patients with CKD and diabetes. And by the way, please note that I'm not including a non-diabetic beer patient here because we already know that patients without diabetes are supposed to go very low protein. That's old news, all right? That's like saying that the earth is not flat. That's something you can even find on the current guideline for CKD treatment. I mean, even your doctor should know about that. So we have just two patients, Carnivore Charlie and Vegan Vaughn. They both have diabetes and advanced kidney disease, but one is eating wild-caught salmon and the other ultra-processed pasta. Which one of these two patients is on the road to dialysis wheel and which one will get better? Yes, because only one of these two patients is going to end up in dialysis. And now it's your time to head down the comment section and place your bets. Who is destroying their kidneys and who is getting better? carnivore charlie or vegan bomb i can't wait to read your comments now guys time to answer the question which one of these two patients is ending up in dialysis and maybe you are anticipating a detailed mechanistic disquisition from me now one that 
deconstructs the intricate interplay between insulin signaling pathways and mammalian target of rapamycin or mTOR activation or an analysis of how specific dietary amino acids contribute to the microbial production of nephrotoxic metabolites such as p crystal sulfate and how that would influence which protagonist crosses the finish line to dialysis first. But you see, I will do nothing like that. Nope, because frankly, the human body is way too complex to define the results of dietary changes only based on a completely arbitrary and limited subset of factors that will be not good science, not even remotely close. You see, using big words to prove a point without actually proving anything is what science bras and social media influencers do. But in reality, the only way to get a meaningful result to a complex question will be getting many carnivore charlies and vegan vongs together for a few years and start monitoring their kidney function. And guess what? They already did that. Yeah, if you remember what I was saying in the first part of the video, there is a study that was conducted exactly to find out if diabetic CKD patients in the advanced stages of kidney disease should eat more protein or less protein. So we will find out in a moment which one of our two protagonists, Carnivore Charlie and Vegan Vom, ends up in dialysis and which one gets better in reality. Alright, before we get to the results, let's look very quickly at how the study was actually conducted. This way, you'll be able to judge for yourself whether it was good science, what its strengths and limits were, and what it means for you. But hey, if all this science talk bores you to death, you can just keep ahead to the juicy results using the navigation bar below. Still with me? Good! Here is the setup. This study wasn't done in some fancy lab. It was conducted in real hospitals with real people in a real-world clinical setting. They followed 129 outpatients average age 75. Their average GFR was 12.1, which, if you know anything about kidneys, is very, very low. We're talking about people who had probably been told to prepare for dialysis for years, but who weren't quite there yet. About 40% of them had diabetes, all right? This is what makes this study so relevant today. Now, the goal was to see what happens when all of them switch to a very low protein diet. That means cutting almost all protein out, meat, dairy, fish, you name it, and replacing it with fruit, low protein vegetable options, and special protein free foods like pasta made without protein. Everyone was put on this diet, diabetics included, and the researchers tracked them for two years. They monitored blood tests, dietary adherence, skinny function, the works. At the end, they split everyone into two groups. The compliant group who stuck with the diet, that's where vegan bond would be. The non-compliant group who didn't fully follow it, that's Carnivore Charlie's team. So question, given these strengths and a few obvious limitations, does this sound like good science to you? Because personally, after examining the study, I can tell you, this was a good study, a very good one. It has its limitations, but it's almost impossible to design a study on the diet without these kind of limitations. So this is good science, in my opinion. But hey, if you disagree, that's fine too. Jump down to the comments and let's discuss it. I'd love to hear your take. Now, next big question, will this study be enough to change the collective minds of doctors and nephrologists around the world? Will they finally start prescribing low-protein diets to all CKD patients, even diabetics? Well, no, not even close. I mean, let's be real, we've had massive mountains of evidence for decades that low-protein diets help non-diabetic CKD patients and still some doctors act like the low protein diet is some radical scary new idea this is why as I was saying it may take another 30 years after this study before things start change for the better
So we examined the study. We decided if it was good or not. Time now to answer the most important question of them all. Here's what happened when they tracked Carnivore Charlie and Vegan Bomb, or well, 129 actual patients like them. They followed everyone for two years, checking who stuck with the very low protein diet, high carb, plant based diet, and who didn't. And then they look at who ended up on dialysis or worse. And the results are pretty shocking, frankly. And the results are pretty shocking, frankly. So, we have two groups of patients. In the first one, only 30% ended up on dialysis or passed away, which is an excellent result given that we are talking 75-year-old patients with a GFR of 12 and many of them are diabetics. However, in the second group, a brutal 71% either started dialysis or lost their lives. So, can you guess in which group was Carnivore Charlie and which was Vegan Vom? Because if you guess that the group that strictly followed the very low protein diet is the group in which the vast majority avoided dialysis, you will be 100% right. So yeah, the group that actually followed the very low protein diet, the diet that was supposed to help them avoid dialysis, actually avoided dialysis. So let me know if you got the answer to this question right. And if you want to see the results directly from the study, here you go. As you can see, we have two lines. Each step up are patients ending up in dialysis. And of course, the red dot line are the patients in the carnivore Charlie's group. In the other group, the green line, the one with vegan vault, was also observed better blood pressure, less urea buildup, and no issues with blood sugar spikes or anything like that. So, are carbs bad for your kidneys? Nope. Carbs, even the refined, protein-free, pasta-looking ones, were the heroes in this story. Meanwhile, high-protein diets, they push patients faster toward dialysis or worse. Because remember that when your kidneys don't work very well, all that acid and toxins you get from protein are not just damaging your kidneys. They will damage all the organs in your body. There is one more thing I want to show you. I know that many of those that follow a diet with high protein intake do that because they don't want to lose muscle mass. And that's a very important concern for kidney patients. In fact, in this study we examined today, muscle mass loss was one of the factors that were monitored closely. And they were able to observe a big difference in muscle mass between the patients that followed the very low protein diet and the patients that didn't. We will find out which group kept their muscles on in a moment but we already know that the group that followed the very low protein diet was actually able to avoid dialysis. Now does this mean you should instantly give up all protein, meat, dairy and fish and start eating nothing but kale and protein free pasta? Well, that's your decision. I'm not here to force you into anything, but the results from this study and many others are crystal clear. If you want to beat this disease, you must go low protein. And this is exactly where I can help you. If you decide you're ready to start a life-saving, kidney-protecting diet, I can help you figure out exactly what foods are good and what foods could secretly be hurting you. Not with generic internet advice, but with a plan based on your labs, your symptoms, and your personal stage of CKD. I offer private one-on-one -on -one consultations fully tailored to you. I will focus on science-based strategies that have helped real patients just like the ones you've heard about today. If you're serious about taking control of your kidney health and giving your body a real fighting chance, send me an email at katherine at newhopeforkidneypatients.com or just click the link in the description below. We have seen that some people in the group of Carnivore Charlie actually survived their bad dietary choices. So were meat eaters able to keep a higher muscle mass than those who followed the very low protein diet? I mean, all that wild caught salmon and raw pastured butter must have helped them with their muscles, right? Now, 
The amount of muscle mass or technically lean mass CKD patients have is a very important parameter. It affects survival rate. Yeah, the more muscle you have, the better your chance of living a long life. And this is especially important for patients that are, you know, 75 year old. So let's take a look at the study and let's see which one of the two bears is doing better in terms of muscle mass. Oh, it's incredible. It says that the group vegan vault was in kept a lot more muscle mass than the group of carnivore Charlie, despite they were eating a lot less protein. Incredible. Okay, okay, but vegan Vaughn is eating 100 grams of pasta per day despite being diabetic. His fasting blood sugar must be uh, through the roof, right? Well, if we take a look at this table, we will also see that even blood sugar levels were under better control in patients following the very low protein diet. Guys, it's true. At the end of the study, compliant patients had higher lean mass, better glucose, better everything else and most importantly the vast majority of them was still alive and out of dialysis the takeaway from this study there is a reason why healthcare providers are supposed to get all their kidney disease patients started on a low protein diet today and no it's not because catching kale is easier than catching salmon it's because ckd patients live a lot longer and better when they follow a low protein diet and guys if you want to learn more about how to eat to protect your kidneys my video up here is for you and this is all for today thank you for watching god bless you all bye bye